Welcome to the video tutorial on how to use the Advanced Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer Map Viewer. This tool is one of many um, in the Oregon Explorer Program Natural Resources Digital Library. The tool is a partnership between the Institute for Natural Resources, OSU Libraries and Press, Oregon Department of Forestry, and the U.S. Forest Service. Um, to, in this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the map viewer and interact with the data sets, how to make an advanced report, and how to make a custom map. The home panel tells you all about the Wildfire Risk Explorer and, and that it is intended to be used to develop and update community wildfire protection plans, natural hazard mitigation plans, and any local plan that involves wildfire risk information. There are a couple different ways to access the data layers. You can go directly from this blue button, go to layers, or at the bottom, there's the home panel and the layers tab. I've clicked on the layers tab and what you'll see are a listing of folders and within each folder are the data sets or layers. And so you can see which layers are activated um, by what is checked. So here, watershed summaries, the folder is checked. And there are several data layers in this folder, but the one that's active right now is the overall wildfire risk summarized by watershed. So there are six different classes, red, very high wildfire risk in the state, um, all the way down to areas where there's a benefit from wildfire. If you want to learn more about the data set, you can click on the I button. The I tells you more about the classes and the data set itself. And in this fact, in this case, it's a model data set. And it's representing um, the risk of large wildfires, those that are greater than 250 acres. There's a description for each one of those classes. Um, and most importantly, it tells you who created that data set. So this was part of the Pacific Northwest Quantitative Wildfire Risk Assessment um, produced by the U.S. Forest Service in, in collaboration with Pyrologics, and it was published in 2018. Many of the data sets featured on the or Advanced Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer are from this assessment. You can also view the metadata. That's kind of the more detailed technical data about the data. Um, you can download the layer. I want to show you that because you can download it um, for a specific area, um, whether you, you identify that on the map viewer or you upload an area of interest. You can select a particular county um, or you can download the whole data set. This is, this is doing a custom selection. By clicking on the X, you get back to the list of layers. So some of the things you can do with the layers um, are to zoom into an area of interest. So I'm going to zoom in to Oak Ridge, Oregon. And either one of these searches should get you to your address. Um, but you do want to pay attention to the location, particularly the state, because we do have um, place names that are shared by other states. So I'm going to choose Oak Ridge, Oregon, and it's going to zoom in. And if I click on layers, I get back to the layers. And I've got that overall wildfire risk summarized by watershed in this case. So that's why you see this red sheen if you wanted to remove that. Um, you get the base map. If you want to change the base map, you can, right now we've got it on Arial as the default. You can click on Topo, which is the topographic coverage for the state. If I wanted to see the wildfire risk at this local level, um, rather than the summary, there's a wildfire risk folder that has the overall wildfire risk at a, at a much finer resolution. And we might want to zoom out to see more of the community at this point. So you're seeing Westford and Oak Ridge, 
and you can add additional layers to your view. And what I'm going to do is add for planning the Oregon Wildland Urban Interface. And one of the features that's kind of nice on this is the transparency. So if you see this slider bar, it means that the layer can be made transparent. And so this way we do see those wooey boundaries a little bit better. You can also use this to compare two data, data sets. So you might want to turn on um, one of these other data sets. Uh, let's see, let's look at hazard to potential structures. And you can see this, this coverage assumes a structure everywhere. And so you can see how the wildfire risk is higher in that coverage. Again, these are modeled data results. So this is the overall wildfire risk. And by toggling between the two, you can kind of see for a particular area um, how they differ. So I'm going to turn that off. You turn off, you just unclick. And now I want to show you how to set a bookmark. Because if you are looking at different parts of the state, um, or even looking at a local community relative to the state, you might be bouncing back in different geographies. And so with the bookmark, you can easily come back to that place. So I'm gonna call this Oak Ridge. And if I were to go to the initial map extent, which was the statewide view, Here's that overall wildfire risk at the statewide level with the WUI coverage on. And going back to bookmarks, Oak Ridge is one of my options now, and it will zoom in. So what I've shown you so far is, is turning on and off layers, zooming in, using the transparency function, um, learning about more information for that data layer, and then how to set a bookmark. The next thing I want to be able to show you is how to create an advanced report. Um, with that, you can either go back to that home panel, you can do it right there, create advanced report, or you can go to the I want to, and it's right here. But if you want some help um, with the first time that you're gonna create an advanced report, I recommend the help tour because it will step you through. So you click advanced report up here in the header and it's the help tab. It tells you to use the, the I want to. Um, it's gonna tell me, okay, I need to select my geography of interest. It does not assume that what you have in the view is, the, is a location. So what I wanna do is, um, and it tells you kind of more descriptive, I wanna draw an area. And I could either digitize, kind of heads up digitizing around a specific area, but that takes too much time. So I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. I'm gonna use the simple rectangle. And I wanna get the community of Westfer. And so I'm gonna draw, and I'm just holding down my mouse button as I select this area. And I wanna get the wooey coverage in there. And then I just hit continue. And it's gonna ask me for information about what I wanna call this report. And I wanna call it the Oak Ridge and Westfer. Um, and my area of interest is Oak Ridge to be able to type. We'll just call it Oak Ridge. And then I'm gonna put my email in. Depending upon the size of the area um, will govern how long it takes for this report to be generated. Um, it's typically, it takes me about five to 10 minutes. So check your email in five to 10 minutes and you'll get re your report. In that report by default um, are the, the maps and the tables and the descriptions for land management, communities, fire history, the overall wildfire risk, average flame length, overall potential impact of wildfire, 
has our two potential structures, housing density and existing vegetation type. So those are all default um, data layers that are going to be reported on in your advanced report. You can then add to your report with um, optional sections. So I'm just going to add wildfire risk to people and property and probability of exceeding eight foot flames, because that's pretty high risk. So you'll see that my re request has been submitted. Um, at this point, I can also download the data for this area. And so it tells you which data layers you can choose from, and you can select them all or none and then add to them. And in this case, I'm just going to do wildfire risk to people and property and hazard to potential structures. And so it's going to give me some uh, other questions about the file formats, whether it's vector or raster the output projection, and then again, an email. And then I'm going to click Extract. And it will also take, um, depending upon the size that you've selected, uh, amount of time to create. So when you've exited, um, then you can go on. Well, I'm going to show you what came to my email today for Oak Ridge and West Fur. You can see that there um, in the outline or table of contents, there are different categories of information. There is a orientation map to get you started. It tells you where it was generated from the Oregon, Advanced Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer. And all those different data sets that we identified in that report are reported on. Um, it starts with some guidelines in terms of uh, additional resources for planning for wildfire risk and min to minimize. Um, and concepts and data, and then it gets into the maps and tables. So this first section is on land ownership and management, and you can see it's about, it's 58% it's private land, 42% federal, in this case, Forest Service, um, and actually gives you the acreages. So it's a little over a 7,000 acre area that I've selected. It, a new feature we've, this added this year is the WUI, the uh, Wildland Urban Interface Area. Um, in this area, there is a WU, there's lots of WUI, and it's high. It's high hazard and 3,000 acres. So almost 50% of that area I've selected is in a WUI zone with a high hazard rating. <clears throat> there are no firewise sites in this particular location, so that's why it's left blank. We get information about the fire history um, from 2008 to 2019. Um, ideally, that is updated annually. Um, we do have a, a partnership, long-term partnership with Oregon Department of Forestry to get this information. And you can see in the area that I selected, most of those uh, fires were human caused. So it tells you acres burned, number of fires. It tells you also about um, previous fires. So in 2002, there were two fires in the surrounding areas. You can see just a little bit there. About the housing density. Um, and I'm going to stop at the overall wildfire risk, um, but it presents a map and those categories that we were looking at earlier. And then it gives you a table of the breakdown by ownership of those hazard risk um, categories. So the number of acres, as well as the percentages. So in this area, uh, more than 44, well, 44% was in a high or very high wildfire risk class. And you can see that the high class um, in the watershed summary um, was the average for that area. So going back to that table of contents, there are many more maps and tables and descriptors, and you can add to that with those optional sections. Um, but we've got 24 pages in this report. So that's how you create an advanced report and get it delivered to your email box inbox. Now I'm going to go back to layers. And I'm going to show you how to make a custom map. This is the third part of the tutorial. 
Like the advanced report, there is also help for print map, but I want to show you um, when you turn that on that basically the area in this red box is what will be mapped. And I'm going to do this all live, so you're going to, to watch this in real time. Um, the print panel tells you um, that you can customize it, so you can change the page layout from landscape 8.5 by 11 to 11 by 17. Um, at this point in time, you can't do it portrait style. Uh, you can change the output format if you didn't want PDF. You can change the resolution. You can, you can have the grid on or off or lat long. You can change the map scale and you can change the name of the map. And I'm gonna call it the Oak Ridge Wildfire Risk. And you can add whatever notes you might be, this might be a map that you're gonna share at a particular meeting. So you could put that in there. Um, I like to put that I made it. Uh, what I also like to do is um, this print preview, by clicking that on, it means <clears throat> that this box stays uh, immovable. If you want to move the box or the map under it and change it, reorient it, um, un check, uncheck that lock print preview. And now we're going to print it. And as I mentioned, we're doing this live. It doesn't take very long, usually. And uh, you get a nice, you open the file and you get a nice formatted map with the legend. So we had the WUI interface on, and then we had that overall wildfire risk. It's got the scale and the title and the location within Oregon. So that's how you make a custom map. And again, uh, you can get to that from the help tours or make a PDF map down here. So I think that concludes this video tutorial. I've been able to show you how to use the map, how to zoom into an area, how to um, turn different data layers on and off. Oh, I did want to mention one more thing. In layers, you can add layers. So if there is a map service that you want to bring in um, to view, you can do that and include that in your map. Um, you can also upload data. So you, if you have a specific area that you're interested in, you can upload that and that will um, stay, stay accessible to you um, while you're logged in and using the map viewer. Log, there's no specific login, but there is, um, you know, when you turn it on in, in that session that you have. So that concludes this demonstration. And um, also want to point to you that they're from the Oregon Explorer Wildfire Risk Landing page, which is here on the Oregon Explorer. You can get to the basic map viewer um, and get to that tutorial as well. So thank you for your time and interest, and um, I wish the best of luck with you with using this tool, and feel free to contact us at the Oregon Explorer program um, with any of your feedback. We always welcome it. We develop it with users, and um, we're excited to see that different places around the state are using these tools to update their plans. Thank you.